Hey, this is Sesh. In this video, I'm going to show you how to insert items in a binary search tree or BST. This follows the BST structure and search algorithm I covered in part one. You may want to watch that video first, so you can jump right into the discussion here. Okay, let's get started. A new item is one that doesn't already happen to be in the tree, so that if we search for it, we won't find it. Say we want to insert 20 in this tree. If we search for 20, we won't find it. More specifically, we will know that it's not there when we attempt to make a right turn at 19 and find that there is no place to go. And this is really important to know. Why? Because if you want to insert 20, this is exactly the place for it to the right of 19. So to insert a new item, we search and fail and then add the item at the point of failure. We can use this reasoning to build the code for insertion off the code for search. The place in the search code where we detect failure is right after the while loop, where we return null. To insert a new item, this is where we need to add it. Also, we need to attach a new item to the node where we made the last futile turn. Unfortunately, we have lost track of that node because we have stepped past it and PTR has gone to null. What we need to do is to hold on to that last PTR value. An easy way to do this is to introduce another pointer, say prev, which will always be one step behind PTR, as in this example of searching for 20. At the beginning, when PTR is set to root, prev is set to null, since there is nothing before PTR. Then, when PTR makes the first left turn at 26, prev grabs onto the 26 node. In the code, we need to be careful to have prev get PTR's old value before PTR is updated to its next value after the turn. There is a bit of a tangential matter to take care of before we proceed, and that has to do with target matching PTR.data. This really shouldn't happen when inserting, since the new item is assumed not to exist in the tree. We can play defensively by keeping this if statement but throwing an exception if the code does pass the equals condition. In other words, if the item already exists, then an exception is thrown. We choose to throw an illegal argument exception, meaning that the item that was passed as argument to the method is not legit since it is already in the tree. So now when we drop out of the while loop with PTR driven to null, we have safely held on to the last node via prev. At this point, the first thing to do is to create a new BST node with target as its data. In the part one search video, we worked with this bare minimum BST node definition. To do this, we will now add a constructor that will accept a data value and set left and right pointers to null. And we can use this constructor to create our new node. Next, we need to attach this new node to the BST. In the example, we know that 20 needs to go to the right of 19. But how do we know this in the code? Outside the loop, there is nothing to tell us whether the last turn that was attempted was a left turn or a right turn. One way to remedy this is to check again whether the item to be inserted is less than prev.data or not, and accordingly set the left or right pointer at prev to the new node. Alternatively, if we want to avoid the repeat check, we can set up a boolean to tell us whether we made a left or right turn. We can have it signal a left turn by default, then set it to true at left turns and false at right turns. So then outside the while loop, we can check this boolean value and accordingly set the left or right child of prev to the new node. Okay, we're nearly done. There's just one sticky issue that we need to handle, and that is, what if the tree is empty to start with so that the target is the very first item to be inserted? An empty BSD has a null root. After the target is inserted, there will be a single node in the tree, which will be the root node. In the code, the while loop will not be entered since PTR set to the root initially will be null right at the outset. After the loop, the new node is created, but we can check for the left value since the tree was never traversed. 
So the place to insert the empty BSD code is right before the check for left. If the root is null, we simply set the root to the new node. And lastly, we need to set the return value. Since the root of the tree itself can change in the empty BSD case, the new root will need to be returned. So we can change the code we just wrote to return the temp reference directly instead of first setting the root variable to it, then returning root. In the case of a non-empty BSD, we will go through the process of attaching the new node to an existing tree node. The root will not change, but since the method calls for a return value, we simply return the original root at the end of the method. Like we did for search, we can write a recursive version of the code to insert an item into a BST. But it doesn't really offer any advantage over the iterative code, so we'll skip it. To summarize, let's run through an example of a sequence of inserts, starting with an empty BST. 12 is the first to arrive and becomes the root of the tree. Next comes 11, which goes to the left of 12. This is followed by 25, which goes to the right of 12. When 20 is inserted, a right turn is made at 12, followed by a left turn at 25. Then 25 arrives again, but it is found to be already in the tree, so an exception is thrown. Next, 30 is inserted to the right of 25. And finally, 22 is inserted following the zigzag path 12 to 25 to 20, where a right turn is made and 22 is attached. Okay, that about does it for insertion. Next up, deleting from a BSD, which I will take up in a separate part 3 video. See you later.